Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Jesse, this is my garage, and if you're like me, you probably have a couple JDM cars in your collection, and you might be like, Jesse, I want another car. What other JDM cars can I buy in 2021 that are not likely to lose value? Well, grab a pen and a piece of paper, because we're gonna talk about seven of those cars right now. All right, now before you switch off this video, you're gonna be like, Jesse, I already know, GTR, Supra. No, we're not gonna put those on the list. We're gonna go something, you probably know some of the cars, but uh, you might not. It might be surprising, so stick around. and Let's get to the first one right now. The first one I have on the list is how about a 91 to 95 Toyota MR2. Now it has a turbocharged two liter engine and it sits in the rear. So it's pretty cool, pretty unique, and Toyota stopped making these cars a while ago. Now if you know what this one looks like, it's pretty iconic. And if you can, grab the 94 to 95. And also the slick top is the ultra rare variant of that car. Now the MR2, the 90s MR2 Toyota has been on the rise for a while. And I really think, and I do think it has plenty of room to go up. All right, yeah, Jesse, we know Toyotas are good, they're reliable, and they're slowly going up in value, especially the sought after sports cars from the 90. Okay, but what about a Honda? Actually, let's say Acura, because the 95 to 01 Acura Integra, and no, it's not the Type R, we already all know that car has lost its mind and just going up in value, but how about the GSR? Because with rising, the rising tide raises all boats, right? So, um, it's and it's pretty easy to make a GSR look like a Type R. Now, the Integra GSR is just one step down from the Type R. Yes, the Type R is the one everybody wants, but if you wanna shell out $86,000 for one of those, go ahead. But this one is going to be more entry point level, and as the Type R rises, clean variants of the GSR are gonna to continue to rise as well. It has 25 less horsepower than the GSR, but uh, it's got VTEC, yo, on an 8,000 RPM redline on a 1.8 liter inline four. All right, well, let's jump back to Toyota for a second. How about a 93 to 97 Toyota Land Cruiser? That's right, and we're talking about a truck too. It's not all sports cars, this thing, uh, if we already all know that the Toyota Land Cruises are pretty BA, pretty awesome, uh, this one in your collection isn't likely to depreciate in value anytime soon. Pretty much any old school Toyota Land Cruiser. Now the 93 to 97, look for the solid rear axle. On the 93 to 97, look for the solid axles with the locking diffs. And of course, the always reliable Toyota Power Plant 4.5 liter inline six. It's a luxury plus classic collectible JDM car. Okay, time to give another manufacturer some love. How about the Mitsubishi 06 Evo 9? Now, good luck finding an untouched one. Now, if you're looking for collectability of these cars, go ahead and skip the ones that are highly modified, big turbos, aftermarket everything and if you really want the collector one the one that's really going to hold value this is kind of going to mirror like the integra type r's those are the ones that are really fetching the value for that are the unmolested ones and the ones that are really going to fetch the price for these mitsubishi evo nines are going to be the unmolested ones so that's really going to be where the money's at now if you do get one that's already built and modified and customized someone's choice you can have a lot of fun with that car because the power plants i think we all know on that car are Insane can handle a ton of power and the all-wheel drive system is a lot of fun. It makes it really quick for like quarter mile times and uh, rallying. And of course in the Evo 9s, the 4G63 is just the Evo power plant that is legendary. All right, now let's jump back over to Honda. Now this is such a unique car. I, I actually been wanting one of these in my collection for a long time and it's just, if you know anything about Honda and you know anything about their sports cars and you know anything about where they came from, the Honda S2000 is definitely a car that they don't make except once every 50 years, I guess. The front engine rear wheel drive platform that we definitely um, love, I love, that's my favorite platform, and then Honda made one, so it's got the Honda 
quality behind it and then it's in the sports car format that we truly love and is truly enjoyable to drive so the honda s2000 was in production from 2000 to 2009 all right so the honda s2000 is like a miata convertible front engine rear wheel drive with uh with 100 extra horsepower and a 9k rev limiter because it's a honda so rev it up yo and uh, enjoy your VTEC time now the ap1 is the earlier generation um s2000 more of a driver's car, you know, quicker steering, higher rev limiter. And then the AP2 comes in and they go with a 2.2 liter. It is the one you want for the money. That seems to be where the money all goes in these cars is for the AP2 models. Now it's gonna have a 2.2 liter inline four and a different kind of suspension feel or steering, steering feel. It's not so jerky, I guess. I haven't driven an S2000, but from the reviews that I've read, that's pretty much what they say. Uh, you know, driver's car, AP1. Mm, the other one, I they really made that AP2 for the American market. The Americans want a bigger engine. They don't like to drive in the high revs, in the high RPMs to get where the power band is on, on the AP1. So I think that was made for our market in general. Doesn't matter. The value is gonna be in the AP2, but the AP1 is always gonna hold the value just a, be a little bit. All right, so this one is my personal favorite. I really have been wanting to add one of these to my collection for a long time. And then I, I feel like it's one of the most beautiful, if not is the most beautiful sports cars to come out of the 90s. And that is the 93 to 95, you already know it, FD Mazda RX-7. Now this one you probably already knew was gonna be on the list. And I put it back, I just, it, it's awesome. It's, it's rising in price over the last year, which makes me sad because I don't have one in my collection. Also out of room for one, but it is slowly rising in price. And I think the big thing that has held this car down is just the rotary engine and the reliability of that engine and the complex, you know, not a lot of people know how to work on them. Not a lot of people understand them. And I think that's really held this car back and why it's not at a higher price point than it is right now. Also, Mazda hasn't made any RX-7s for a long time. They made the RX-8, which was cool. Thanks for doing that, Mazda. We appreciate you, but it's definitely not the RX-7 <clears throat> that we all know and love, the FC and the FD, but this is the FD RX-7. Put one of these in your collection and uh, just hold on to it for the long term. Not gonna lose you money anytime soon. All right, last car on this list. It is actually sitting right here. Um, the Nissan 300ZX, I totally feel like this car is slept on. One of the 90s, I don't know, super cars that were made to compete with the RX-7 and the Supra. Uh, you know, so a twin turbo five speed from the 90s. This is one of Nissan's flagship models. La US was lucky enough to get it. They held the skyline from us. But they did give us this one. Now picking up a twin turbo 300ZX for ten to fifteen thousand dollars doesn't sound like a bad deal at all it's actually probably one of the cheaper cars on this list because i think everybody overlooks it and doesn't realize what potential they're missing out on and they also offer the non-turbo version that you can pick up for much less and still trust me this one's a non-turbo it is super fun to drive and you can get yourself in enough trouble and there's a lot of parts and i don't know engine swaps to do to make it twin turbo and more horsepower and of course we get our 90s stuff with four wheel steering on the highest on the twin turbo models which is one of the revolutionary cars that were completely designed by computer one of the first cars that were completely designed by computers the 300 zx came out in the 90s on 90 year model so they actually designed this car in the 80s to roll out in the 90s so it's kind of mind-blowing to think think about the technology that's in this car and pretty fun to drive that it was all designed a long, long time ago. And on the twin turbo version, 300 horsepower was quite a big deal in 1990 through 1996 that this car was manufactured in the US. Now they did continue to make this car in Japan until 99, but in the US market, we're gonna see from 90 to 96, 
pick up a twin turbo version because if you've been watching these cars at all, you have sl seen slowly rise up because I know I've had my eye on them for a while and they have been drifting up as all the cars on this list are doing right now. All right, well, if you wanna watch uh, another video on why you should actually own a 300ZX, make sure and click that video, hit the subscribe button so you can see other stuff. Watch that next video so you can see why you should own a 300ZX and I will see you next time.